Welcome to this Dell EMC storage technical video. The topic for this video is SC series storage and SMIS integration with Microsoft System Center Virtual Machine Manager 2012 and 2016. We'll start off with an overview of SMIS, show how to enable SMIS. Once SMIS is enabled, show how to discover and manage SC series arrays from Microsoft SCVMM. Show how to create SAN copy capable VM templates. Show how to leverage these templates to thinly and rapidly provision new guest VMs. And finally, we'll review the benefits of rapid provisioning. The Storage Management Initiative Specification, or SMIS, is an industry standard protocol developed by the Storage Network Industry Association. SMIS allows third-party applications that support SMIS to interface directly with SAN storage to perform SAN-related operations such as monitoring, managing, and provisioning storage resources. Let's take a closer look at how SMIS integrates with SC Series Storage. On the storage side, one or more SC Series arrays is required, along with an instance of Unisphere Central or the Dell Storage Manager Data Collector. On the Microsoft side, an instance of SCVMM is required, managed by the SCVMM Administrator Console. SMIS is configured between the SCVMM server and Unisphere Central, or the DSM Data Collector. Enabling SMIS does not interfere with the Storage Administrator's ability to continue to manage SC arrays with native SC tools, the Unisphere Web UI for SC series, and the DSM client for SC series. These tools can all be used concurrently. Once enabled, SCVMM admins are able to perform a subset of SAN operations from the SCVMM console, and these include create and delete LUNs, map LUNs to hosts and clusters, and create SAN copy capable VM templates for rapid provisioning which we will discuss in more detail later on in this video. Enabling SMIS is quick and easy. First, we'll show how to do this if you are using Unisphere Central. Simply log in to the Unisphere Central web UI, and under Edit Port, click the SMIS service to select it, check the Enabled box, and click OK. If you are using the DSM Data Collector, log in to the Data Collector console and under the SMIS tab on the left, check the Enabled box for SMIS Server Properties. Click Apply Changes, and then OK. Next, let's review the essential components of a basic SCVMM environment. The core server components include the SCVMM server and the library server. These roles can be placed on the same server or on separate servers as shown here. The SCVMM environment is managed from the SCVMM admin console, and one or more virtualization hosts or clusters serve as targets for deploying VMs with two Hyper-V hosts and a three-node Hyper-V cluster shown here. When setting up the environment, the library server component of SCVMM must be installed on a physical Hyper-V host if you want to be able to create SAN copy capable templates for rapid provisioning. Network access between SCVMM and Unisphere Central, or the data collector, is required, and SCVMM and the managed hosts and clusters must be able to access your SC array with either iSCSI or Fiber Channel. For more information on how to set up your environment, refer to this Deployment and Configuration Guide, which is located at the address shown here. Now that SMIS is enabled, and we have verified the essential components of the SCVMM environment required to support SMIS integration, we'll need to configure SMIS user accounts for authentication. We'll temporarily hide the other SCVMM components for now and focus on the SCVMM server and admin console as we look at how to set up the SMIS user accounts. The first step is to create an SMIS user on the Unisphere Central Server, or DSM Data Collector, and grant this user administrator access to one or more SC arrays. 
The second step is to create a matching run as SMIS user account on the SCVMM server. SCVMM will use this run as account to discover and manage SC storage. Let's take a closer look at how these user accounts are created, starting with the SC side. If you are using Unisphere for SC series, create an SMIS user and grant this user administrator access to at least one SC array. In this example, as shown under the data collector settings, the user is named SMIS2 and is granted admin access to a storage center named SC17. If you are using the DSM data collector, the process is very similar except for a different user interface. In this example, as shown here under Users and Groups, we can see that the SMIS user is listed with admin access granted to SC17. A matching SMIS user also needs to be created in SCVMM. Use the SCVMM Administrator Console to create a new run as account under Settings. Once the SMIS users are created, you are now ready to discover and manage SC storage from SCVMM. To discover storage, launch the Add Storage Devices wizard in SCVMM and specify the SMIS Run As account for authentication. Once the wizard completes, the SC array will be listed in the SCVMM fabric under Arrays with a status of Responding. With SMIS configured and storage discovered, we can now talk about creating a SAN copy capable VM template which leverages SAN snapshots for rapid provisioning new guest VMs. To create the VM template, select a Hyper-V host in your SC VMM environment that has access to the managed SC array. The VM that will become the template will be staged on this host. Next, Use the SCVMM Admin Console to create and map a new LUN on the SC array to this host. Stage a new VM, add desired roles, features, and applications, and patch it to the desired level. Once the VM is fully staged and patched, import the VM to the library server as a new template. SCVMM will sysprep the VM as it is imported. Once imported, this LUN and the VM it contains will serve as a gold image for deploying new VMs with rapid provisioning. Now let's deploy some new guest VMs to see rapid provisioning in action. Use the SCVMM Admin Console to launch the Create Virtual Machine Wizard. For the template, choose the Rapid Provision template from the list. A new, thinly provisioned view volume is created from the gold source and mapped to the target host. This LUN consumes no space initially. When the new VM is powered on, only new data will consume space on this LUN. For unchanged data, the new VM will reference the gold source volume. For each new VM deployed, this process is repeated, as shown here with VM2 deployed to another target host managed by SCVMM. As before, the new LUN consumes no space initially. Deploying rapid provisioned VMs to standalone hosts or clusters is supported, as shown here with VM3. Use the Dell Storage Manager client if you want to view the relationship between the gold source volume and volumes provisioned from the gold source. To do this, click the Storage tab, Expand Volumes, and click the gold source volume to select it. Click the Snapshots tab in the center pane, which will show a table view initially. To change from table view to tree view, select view and choose tree view from the drop-down list. The display will change from table view to tree view, showing the relationship between the gold source volume shown on the left and each thinly provisioned volume, one for each new VM for guest 001 and guest 002, as shown here in this example. In conclusion, let's review one of the main benefits of rapid provisioning, which is space efficiency on your SC array. This chart represents SAN space consumption when deploying VMs with a standard VM template without the benefit of rapid provisioning. The template, representing a sysprepped VM, 
consumes about 20 gigabytes of sand space in this example. When a new VM is deployed with a standard template, a full copy of the source VM is used to create the target VM, consuming another 20 gigabytes of sand space. And each additional VM deployed also consumes another 20 gigabytes of sand space. As you can see, this is not very space efficient. In this exact same scenario, if these three VMs were deployed with rapid provisioning, the space savings would be significant. Instead of consuming an additional 20 gigabytes of space for each VM deployed, only changed data would consume sand space. The small amount of new data for each VM shown here represents the Windows Server profile information created when the VM is booted for the first time. The key takeaway is that with rapid provision VMs, only changed data or new data will consume additional sand space. That concludes this technical video. For more information about Dell EMC SC Series Storage, please visit dell.com forward slash storage resources. Thanks for watching.